Hey guys, uh, Tuesday, April 2nd, Bitcoin's at 65,800, and the title of this episode is Volatility. I want to just talk a little bit about volatility in log-log space versus a regular space. So I think, you know, everybody is very focused on drawdowns and how far could it drop? And what's my downside? And, you know, look, we're in, we're dealing with a very unusual kind of animal here. Uh, This is not something that goes up 20% a year, 10% a year, and then goes down 10%. This is a, something that is going up 45% on average a year, sort of slowly going down to 20%, but it's going up 45% a year, plus or minus, um, plus or minus about 45%. And, and even that is not actually a great picture because if it goes up, it actually has a more tendency to kind of mean revert, right? So it's not pure Brownian motion either. Uh, this is a power law that's moving according to the distribution of... Um, or the time since the genesis. And uh, it's very, very hard to get your head around what this means. Um, It's very hard to understand volatility in sort of log-log space. Now, what I will tell you is that actually this process is not volatile in log-log space. It has a volatility in log-log space of 0.3, which means that one standard deviation, you double the price, One standard deviation, you half the price from trend line. That's not volatile because, you know, Bitcoin has gone up 1 million times uh, over the last 15 years, you know, from 10 cents to, you know, order of magnitude 100,000 where we are today. Um, So we've gone up a million times in a very, very consistent fashion in log-log space with something like a 97% correlation. Um, And so... You know, eh, this is not a volatile asset, really, it, it, in terms of the growth where it's growing. But in terms of just the pure day-to-day volatility, like today, yeah, it looks, looks terrible. Um, I just want to show one great tweet by Giovanni. Um, and uh really like this uh, this thing. I asked Giovanni, could we model out, um, do a Monte Carlo simulation of Bitcoin price using the power law and just with sort of randomized inputs around it. Uh, And he goes, oh yeah, I've already done that. And here it is. This is this simulated uh, Monte Carlo simulation with with a sinusoidal uh, four-year sine wave. But, But all of this is just pure random numbers, right? So this is using a sign a, a power law with a sinusoidal four year wave and just some uh some random numbers. And as you can see, it's tracking the data really, really well. It's not trying to f- you know, we're we're just using the model. We're just say run and this produces this. So, you know, it didn't do a perfect job. It didn't capture this peak. Did capture that one, did <laughs> capture that one. Didn't quite capture there, but it kind of got there. And so my point is you can easily be fooled by randomness. And if you want the big gains, you're going to have to live with the volatility. Um, I know a lot of people out there are thinking, oh, I'm just going to dart in and out. I'm going to get in. Whenever I see some indicator, I'm going to just sell. I'm going to get out. That stuff doesn't work. It's super tax inefficient. Uh, but it just doesn't work with Bitcoin. Uh, and if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. But the reality is nobody, in my not, in my opinion, has been able to do that uh, consistently over time. I, I just don't think that works. I think the only way to do this is just to hold it and appreciate that this asset is just an extraordinary asset. And, uh, and you know, I, I get it. It's not for everybody. And not everybody's going to make the big bucks. Uh, most people are going to be chasing you know, one, two, three, four percent 
possibly uh, real returns. But if you want these exceptional returns, you're going to have to take risk. So that's episode 69. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later.